The second question is if you have fresh tissue from a cancer biopsy, it, I mean the tissue is not available from a bi biopsy, how often can the Greek test be successfully done on a blood specimen from the patient? And if only a blood specimen is possible, which cancers do not avail themselves to a reliable Greek test with only a blood specimen? Okay, so let's start then with the um, scientific background around that. Uh, I know that I may sound a little bit depressive, but this is a scientific reality is that uh, it's well established my models and experiments that when a tumor is over two millimeters in diameter it already spread new vessels and it spread to the total organism to the rest uh, of the organism through lymphatics or newly formed blood vessels uh, circulated tumor cells so the entity of early stage cancer is really questionable so it means that almost from the day of a diagnosis of a malignancy you may have circulated tumor cells. This is the general rule, but uh, restrictions that, you may, that we may have is actually where the tumor arises from. So we know that the primary brain tumors since they are existed in a very well protected cavity which filters everything that comes in and comes out. Uh, that we are, I'm talking about blood-brain barrier. Uh, it means that circulated tumor cells almost never existed in the periphery. Also there are cases from testicular carcinomas but this is also a rarity because they are very well uh, established by developing a very rich network of blood vessels and they can be found. But primarily the answer to both questions are primary brain tumors, not metastatic like breast carcinoma that they metastasize to the right. brain, but we are talking about uh, glioblastomas or oligodendroglioblastomas, etc. So such kind of tumors which either way uh, the only uh, technique that you may take a biopsy is a major surgery, uh, circulated tumor cells cannot be obtained. Only a few cases in my career I have seen circulated tumor cells and all of them either they had what they called artery vein uh, anastomosis or malformation which allows of a path the blood brain barrier or there was a surgery which actually an iatrogenic factor allows the circulated tumor cells to go out from the brain cavity. Follow up on part of this question. What if you have a, a tumor that is well encapsulated somewhere else in the body and really has not accessed any of the blood supply or is just a small tumor that is, uh, you know, you hear from being encased, uh, you know, with uh, fibrous type tissue or something mm -hmm. like that. Would that also be one of those times you probably would not find anything if it was well protected and not out in the circulating blood for one reason or another? Yes, it, it may happen, but it's still a rarity. Okay. okay. Because the major rule said that when the tumor becomes really very hypoxic or the pH is very, very low, the tumor uh, may survive so that the can obtain nutrients and oxygen by developing new blood vessels. But yes, there are very rare cases which either the tumor can be encapsulated or even make a major calcification around it before developing new blood vessels and already the tumor is pretty much large enough. And there are biochemical pathways which actually allows those cells to grow even in this very hypoxic environment but primarily those tumors are already resistant and for example there are specific types like that that they do not respond to any kind of therapy. One other thing you said on the hypoxia and the lower pH around the tumor when it's forming, you mean it becomes very acidic? Yes. And it, then it would die if it could not do anything else at that point? Is that what you're saying? I mean that the tumor needs to get more oxygen? 
and, and, and develop and be able to get rid of the waste material that in, it's creating? In the beginning, yes, when it's uh, not so what we call anaplastic, when it's well differentiated, yes, it needs oxygen uh, sub, uh, and nutrients supplied by blood vessel. But even though if this happens for long, uh, in clinical practice you see a tumor and then when it becomes hypoxic it becomes necrotized in the center. But the periphery you have uh, in, in what the clinicians call halo, you have the cells which they actually mm -hmm. switch off few biochemical pathways like the hypoxic inducible factor 1 alpha which change completely the metabolic ability of the tumor. So, so it can, longer, they can yeah. survive in low pH and in low oxygen environment. But then things become really very bad. So obviously cancer will do what it has to to survive. It, yes, it, in a way it has it's multiple pathways and it can access those.